Babe, stop <laughs> moving! So Frida, this woman in her late 20s, is just lounging around scrolling through her phone, like any of us when we're avoiding real life. She stumbles upon some news about Slater King, you know, the billionaire who went from rich and flashy to, oops, I did something highly inappropriate, and got cancelled for it. Now he's in full redemption mode, all, I've changed, I swear, and trying to win back the people who don't really care about him. Frida's watching with this look, half curious, half, really dude? As she wonders if guys like that can actually change. Frida and her bestie Jess are cocktail waitresses, working high-end events to scrape by while side-eyeing the elite. Tonight they're serving a gala thrown by, yep, you guessed it, Slater King himself. The place is super fancy, dripping in money, and designer outfits. As they're serving drinks, Jess nudges Frida, showing off two dresses she smuggled in. Her plan? They're gonna ditch the serving gear and crash the party as guests. Frida, obviously down for chaos, goes along with it. They sneak off, change into the fancy dresses, and suddenly they're no longer waitresses. They're mingling with the posh folks. And then, classic Frida. <laughs> Perfect way to go unnoticed, right? As she's still processing the embarrassment, Slater King swoops in, like he's auditioning for Charming Billionaire, the movie. He helps her up, and get this, breaks off her other heel like it's some Cinderella twist. So now she's balanced again, but with two stumpy shoes. Frida's red-faced but can't help being impressed by the smoothness of it all. Slater then drags her into his circle of rich, fancy friends, and somehow she's now in the VIP. By the end of the night, Slater throws out this casual invite for Frida and Jess to join him on a trip to his private island. Like, obviously they say yes. Who's gonna turn down this private island from a billionaire? Fast forward to the next day and Frida and Jess find themselves on a plane headed to the island joined by this weird collection of people. We've got Rich, the therapist who probably needs a therapist himself. Vic, who's a photographer but looks like he's here to win Most Mysterious Man Award. Cody, the private chef who takes himself way too seriously. Tom, the DJ who probably hasn't slept since the 90s. Lucas, a recent grad who just looks confused. Sarah, Cody's reality TV star girlfriend. And Camila and Heather, two party girls who seem like they only know one volume, loud. They land and are greeted by Stacy, Slater's assistant, who's got the warmth of a refrigerator. First thing she does, confiscates everyone's phones like they're on a middle school field trip. Privacy and disconnecting, she says. Sure, Stacy. Frida gets shown to her luxurious room, which is more like a small palace. There's a fancy bottle of perfume waiting for her, so she sprays some on, of course. But then a maid walks in. <laughs> And okay, this woman looks like she just wandered off a horror movie set. She's all distant, doesn't make eye contact, and just mutters, Red Rabbit, before bouncing out of the room. Frida's like, uh, what? But decides to file it under, not my problem, and keeps going with her day. I mean, island vibes, right? Everything's amazing at first. Sun, drinks, poolside relaxation, the works. Slater takes Frida on a private walk around the island, and it's all postcard perfect. He talks about how hard it is to maintain the property, like she's supposed to feel bad for him or something. He also mentions a snake problem, which Frida's hoping isn't a metaphor. But who knows? She tells him all about her nail art business. Animal-inspired nails are her thing, and Slater seems super into it. Frida's feeling kind of special, not gonna lie. As they stroll by, she notices Stacy again, this time with a bunch of red gift bags. Frida thinks, weird, but okay, gift bags are fun, and moves on. That night, they all gather for dinner. Cody's whipped up some bougie food. Everyone's drinking, the vibe is immaculate. For now, at least. So the night's going strong, everyone's vibing, and what do they do next? They decide to take drops of a special substance. <laughs> Flash forward to the next morning and Frida wakes up in her bed, feeling like her brain's been put through a blender. She notices that a red stain she had on her dress last night is now gone. She's confused, wondering if someone played magical laundry fairy on her while she was out cold. But she's got zero memory of that happening. The weirdness only gets weirder as the day rolls by. Frida starts getting these strange flashes of memory-like tiny clips from a bad dream that don't fit anywhere. Then there's the dirt under her fingernails. Even though she doesn't remember a fun romp in the garden, things are starting to feel less luxury island getaway and more and more mystery horror show. At one point, she tries to return Slater's vape pen, and he reintroduces her to Rich, who she clearly remembers meeting at the gala. Frida's like, uh, is it just me? Or is this getting really sketchy? Meanwhile, Jess isn't exactly doing fine and dandy either. She catches the maid, the one who gave Frida that red rabbit cryptic nonsense, handling some snakes, like it's a totally normal island pastime. Something about the maid just screams, not right. And Jess starts feeling like this whole place has some messed up secrets. Then things take a big turn. One night, Jess suddenly screams in pain. Jess confides in Frida later, telling her she feels like something is really off. Then she starts getting nosebleeds out of nowhere. 
which in Frida's book is definitely a red flag. Next day, Frida's on the hunt for Slater, but runs into the maid instead. This time, the maid's offering her a drink, snake venom liquor, because nothing says refreshing like venom. Frida thinking, why not add to the chaos, drinks it. It tastes like pure regret, but she downs it anyway. After that, things get even weirder. She spots Sarah with a bruise that looks pretty suspicious. And the worst part? Jess is suddenly missing. To top it off, Camilla and Heather are all, Jess, who's that? while using Jess's lighter like it's always been theirs. Frida's freaking out and sprints back to her room, where she finds a knife hidden behind the mirror. As she's staring at it, she has this flashback, Jess telling her to hide it. Now she's sure. Something absolutely terrible is going down on this island. Frida's desperate for some real answers. She decides to trust Sarah, who's also been sensing that things are seriously wrong. The two of them sneak into a room, where Frida once saw those red gift bags. What do they find? More of that snake venom liquor. And suddenly it clicks. The perfume everyone's been using is from some flower that makes people lose their memories, while the snake venom seems to be like the antidote, bringing the memories back. So they mix some venom with tequila, get Camilla, Heather, and even Stacy to drink it. Stacy has no clue what's happening, but hey, bottoms up. And soon enough, the island's perfect facade starts cracking. Everyone's getting pretty wasted now, and Frida takes this as her chance. She sneaks into Slater's office, determined to find their confiscated phones. Sarah stands watch outside, ready to signal if anything goes wrong. Frida ends up hiding when Slater, Stacy, and Slater's giant of a bodyguard, Stan, walk in. While she's hunkered down, she goes through Slater's stuff and finds these old photographs, pictures from a previous trip. As she's flipping through, suddenly she gets a massive nosebleed, and it's like a floodgate of memories opens up. <laughs> Stop <laughs> moving! Shut up! She got bit. She remembers everything. Now Frida knows just how bad it all is. Frida escapes and tells Sarah everything. That night at dinner, more memories come crashing back. Hey, stop! You got Alright, so here we go. Turns out Rich was even worse than they thought. He'd assaulted Frida back at the gala, which explains why he looked like he'd seen a ghost when she recognized him. Frida and Sarah, not about to let that slide, decide it's time to take action. They kick off an impromptu dance party to get everyone distracted while they figure out their next move. And then chaos hits like a freight train. Camila and Heather's memories come rushing back, and they are not happy. And bam, he's dead due to death. Instantly. Come here! Just like that, Heather's gone, and now it's full-blown pandemonium. Everyone left is running around like headless chickens, trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Stan, who's loyal to Slater to the bitter end, starts hunting down Frida like he's in an action movie, with full-on murderous intent. <laughs> Meanwhile, the remaining guys grab Camila and drag her back to Slater's villa, and in a horrifying power move, Slater, completely unfazed, just steps on Camila's neck until she suffocates. It's brutal, and Frida, hiding nearby, is frozen, horrified. Then Stacy finds Frida and she's mad. Turns out she remembers now, everything Slater and the guys did to her, and instead of teaming up, she's blaming Frida for making her remember the trauma. <laughs> It's messy, it's desperate, and Frida's left panting, barely able to process what just happened. But there's no time. There's more noise outside. <laughs> Lucas, the only guy who hadn't been part of the atrocities, starts remembering everything he saw. The fear, the guilt, all of it overwhelming him. But before he can do anything, Frida and Sarah show up, laser focus on confronting Slater. Lucas opens the door to let them into the villa. Don't open the doors, don't open the doors, okay? Frida and Sarah freeze for a moment, but they've come too far to stop now. They push forward and head inside to face Slater. Slater's there and he's losing his cool fast. The confident, charming billionaire act is cracking, and Frida can see the fear creeping in. A fight breaks out and Slater might be stronger, but Frida's fueled by pure rage and memories of everything he did to her and the others. As they fight, more of her memories come flooding back. She remembers being on the island last year, remembers escaping, remembers the scar in her head from when Slater fled her fall, even remembers biting off Vic's pinky in a desperate struggle. It's all coming back and it's making her fight harder. Slater, realizing he's losing control, starts ranting, blaming everyone but himself. Classic. In a last-ditch effort to calm himself, he takes a hit from his vape pen. But surprise! Frida had spiked it with that flower toxin, and now he's completely lost. He looks around seeing all the bodies, the chaos, and has no idea what's going on. Panic sets in, and it's almost pitiful. Then things get even worse. A candle gets knocked over, and just like that, the room's on fire. The flames spread fast. 
turning the villain to an inferno. Frida's not about to let Slater get away that easily. She drags his disoriented self out of the burning building, determined to make sure he faces the consequences. Inside, Vic is still there, left to burn. Outside, Frida starts talking, and it seems like she's talking to Sarah. But then the camera pans out, and nope, Sarah's nowhere to be found. It's just Frida, alone, talking to an unconscious Slater as the villa burns behind them. So the dust and ashes finally settle, and it starts hitting Frida. Everything she's been through, everything she's lost. There's no going back to normal after this, and she knows it. Fast forward a bit, and now Frida's back at another gala. But this time, oh, things are very different. She's there with Slater, but he's not the suave billionaire anymore. He's more like a puppet on strings, completely under Frida's control thanks to the steady dose of flower toxin she's been slipping into his vape pen. He's all smiles and politeness, a hollow version of himself, while Frida's the one truly in charge. She's surveying the room, scanning the faces, and then she spots him, Rich. The guy looks like he's seen a ghost. He remembers what he did, and now he's terrified, and rightly so. Then comes the final twist of the night. The host steps up to the mic, introduces Frida not just as Slater's wife, but also as the new CEO of the company. Boom. She's not just a survivor. She's the one running the show now. The man who tried to destroy her? She's taken everything they had, and now it's hers. Moral of the story? No ditty.